Hello everyone, this is Nick here at NJ's Bricks, and today I've got a fun topic of discussion. We are going to take a look at which Star Wars characters have been passed over for minifigures throughout the 25 years of LEGO Star Wars. With so many different properties in both animated and live action, there are plenty of characters that deserve their own minifigure recreation, and LEGO could bring us some cool new sets to fill these niches. To preface, I have not seen every single episode of every animated project, and I can't exactly remember every scene of every live action one, so I'll go over the ones that I remember or see are obvious misses from LEGO and some of my own favorite characters as well. Unfortunately, I am not an all-knowing Star Wars and LEGO encyclopedia, but thankfully, the collective knowledge of YouTube basically is. I would love for you guys to comment below on which characters you are missing the most as minifigures, especially if it's not one that I have noted here in the video that you think should have been mentioned. Remember to like and subscribe below if you enjoyed this content. I will probably be doing a video on missing characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and perhaps another on Harry Potter characters. Despite these themes having been around for a long time, LEGO has a lot more retreads or remakes of characters and has still let a number of niche and sometimes not so niche characters fall through the cracks, so let's take a look. Here are 15 LEGO Star Wars minifigures that they need to make in no particular order. We're going to kick things off with Galen Erso. It is kind of insane that a central figure of an entire film, whose name is spoken aloud dozens of times in that film, has yet to become a LEGO minifigure, but it is true. Of Rogue One fame, Galen is the creator of the Death Star's weapon and subsequently its flaw that will allow the Rebels to destroy it. His daughter and the main character of Jin, of course exist, but they never released a set containing Galen. While he is certainly discussed much more than he actually appears on screen, you would think they would have found a way to get him into a poly bag or even an advent calendar. I would take any type of accessible product that could give us a Galen or so minifigure. Also of note, Mads Mikkelsen has so far been snubbed of multiple opportunities to have popular characters turned into minifigures, and you will see him show up in future videos of this nature. His brother Lars, on the other hand, is represented by one of the most expensive traditional release minifigures in all of Star Wars with Grand Admiral Thrawn. Next is Melshi. Melshi has now appeared in multiple Star Wars properties with the release of the Disney Plus series Andor. Although he died at the Battle of Scarif in Rogue One, fans were excited to see the origins of the character when he popped back up in Andor as a prison inmate alongside Cassian on Narkina 5. Melshi's role in Cassian's escape from the prison and what we know will be his future joining the Rebellion in tandem embeds him as a critical figure of early Rebellion success. His sacrifice for the Rebellion warrants eternal glory in minifigure form. Next up, I have Kino Loy. Most Star Wars fans I know departed their viewing of Andor with awe and amazement at the character of Kino Loy and his wonderful portrayal by Andy Serkis. His presence, emotion, and delivery of Tony Gilroy's superb dialogue are amongst the upper echelons of Star Wars acting. I know that Andy would love to have another minifigure to add to his precious collection that already includes Gollum, Ulysses Claw from the MCU, Alfred Pennyworth from The Batman, and Snoke from this same universe. Next, I have Shmi Skywalker. It is nothing short of disrespectful that the Virgin Mary figure of the Star Wars universe has yet to receive her own minifigure. 25 years on and all we will ever have to remember her by are the coarse sands of Tatooine. I would expect that we'd get a release of this minifigure in some sort of polybag type product or as a gift with purchase, much in the way we received the new on Baru minifigure in the Lars Family Homestead Kitchen GWP. It is hard to imagine her fitting into the overall narrative of a larger set, but a smaller, more niche set such as this may be appropriate to make this one happen. Next up, I want Boss Nass. The revered leader of the Gungans during the invasion of Naboo, Boss Nass has yet to find himself rewarded by Lego for his courageous efforts. He is a pretty memorable character from the movie and was praised by both the Gungans and the greater Naboo for making the alliance that successfully countered the invasion. He would be really fun to get in big fig form, perhaps some kind of set based around the invasion negotiations. This would give them a good excuse to give us another Queen Amidala minifigure for those of us unable to get the very expensive original from Gungan Sub set 9499. This is the type of set I would petition for LEGO to make 
if they ever revisited The Phantom Menace for some fresh ideas. I have always liked to see them give their take on scenes or concepts that are new to LEGO rather than revisiting the same ships and vehicles for the fifth time. Next on my list is Depa Balaba first appearing in The Phantom Menace. Jedi Master Depa Balaba re-entered the consciousness of Star Wars fans during the opening sequences of Season 1 of The Bad Batch. Master to Padawan Caleb Doom, Depa Balaba was savagely gunned down by her clone battalion while creating an opportunity for young Caleb to escape. Balaba served on the Jedi Council during its final years before the execution of Order 66 and was originally herself trained by Mace Windu. While we don't see a ton of her on screen, she is still very influential as an ancillary presence to other characters we love, most notably Kanan Jarrus of Star Wars Rebels, who was forced to change his name from Caleb Doom after the escape of Order 66. Next, I have Yaddle. There are just three, count them, three characters of this species in official Star Wars canon, and you're telling me we still don't have a Yaddle minifigure? She is nearly 500 years old and a Jedi Master herself. Yaddle belonged to the same species as Yoda and Grogu, all of which we know to be extremely Force-sensitive. Yaddle eventually became a member of the Jedi High Council and passed away in year 32 before the Battle of Yavin, the same year as the invasion of Naboo, a.k.a. during the Phantom Menace. We don't really get much Yaddle on screen across the universe, but the character has been covered much more extensively in Legends canon, as far as I understand it, and I am sure fans everywhere would love to see this minifigure. Next up, I'm going to mention a couple of droids. First here is A. P5. This is an RA7 protocol droid from the animated series Star Wars Rebels. Formerly an analyst droid for the Republic, he was relegated to inventory duty under the Empire. After years of Imperial mistreatment, AP5 is befriended by Chopper and becomes a member of the Ghost crew. AP5 is a very memorable character with a droll personality and very recognizable speech patterns reminiscent of Alan Rickman's Severus Snape. His dry analyses provide a sharp contrast to Chopper's sassy impulsivity whenever they're paired together, and it would be very cool to get a nice AP5 minifigure. Second droid here is L337. L3 is one of the most interesting droids in the canon to me, with a very compelling character and storyline that endeared her to many fans after seeing Solo, a Star Wars story. Her acerbic wit and individualism are very unique, and she believes in free will for all droids and actively advocates for other droids. L3's climactic success on Kessel, coming full circle with our introduction in the cantina, makes our pain in her death feel well-earned by the film. She goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Glover in a number of scenes, and her eventual integration with the Millennium Falcon makes her a must-have among companion droids of Star Wars. Next here I have Migs Mayfield. I will admit, this one here is definitely amongst the most niche of the names on the list. Mayfield shows up in just two episodes of The Mandalorian, which makes him feel unimportant, but in reality, he has just as much or more screen time as many of the film characters. Mayfield is one of my favorite bit characters that has ever shown up in a Star Wars project. I love Bill Burr, and I actually think that he brings something really truthful and honest to the character that makes Mayfield very real to me, despite the fact that you're listening to a Boston accent in a galaxy far, far away. His evisceration of the Imperial officer, who waxed poetic about Operation Cinder, was an excellent character moment. It emotionally and linguistically articulates what many galactic citizens and viewers at home feel about the Empire. I was really hoping to see him show up in Season 3, and I hope it's not off the table for the future. Cobb Vanth. Cobb Vanth is another somewhat niche character that originated on Disney+, Plus, but now he has appeared in multiple projects and he could still appear in future projects. Vanth originally teams up with Din Djarin to kill the Krayt Dragon in Season 2 of The Mandalorian and later returns to confront Cad Bane and the Pikes as they seek to take control of Tatooine in the book of Boba Fett. He is portrayed by the infinitely charming Timothy Oliphant, running his own version of the titular character's classic Outlaw with a Moral Code archetype. Cobb Vanth is a fan favorite and I'm sure would be a welcome addition to many Star Wars minifigure collections. Here is one I gotta have. It's Black Kersantan Man, another follow-up from the Book of Boba Fett. My understanding is that Kersantan had a lengthy history in the Legends canon long before ever appearing on the Disney Plus screen. He is a black-furred Wookiee, very cool-looking, 
Chrysanthemum is a bounty hunter that was frequently employed by Jabba the Hutt and then subsequently Jabba's cousins, the twins. Kersantin is actually hired to assassinate Boba Fett, but is thwarted and eventually hired to work for Boba during the Pike's invasion of Tatooine. Kersantin is another unique fan favorite character that would make a great minifigure, a new Wookiee that would be super cool. Literally, any Pike is next on my list. Any Pike. The Pikes were very prominent plot figures in multiple Star Wars projects now, including Solo, a Star Wars story, and the Book of Boba Fett. They've also showed up in the animated universe and been named in conversation elsewhere. The Pikes have a pretty cool design, if not always consistent, and it would be very nice to get a Pike, any Pike, in minifigure form. None of them are really named or individualized like the Tuscans, so just give us a Pike Smuggler or a Pike Enforcer minifigure and be done with it. Getting near the end of the list here, we have Enoch. It may be a bit unfair to name a character so recently introduced, but Enoch has to be hands down the coolest looking stormtrooper there ever was. Appearing at Grand Admiral Thrawn's side in the Disney Plus series Ahsoka, fan theories began flooding the internet as to the nature of this mysterious stormtrooper. There is a lot of entendre behind the meaning and the name and the gold mask that I won't get into here, but Enoch is a super cool and unique character that we will almost certainly get as a minifigure at some point in time. I would put money on it being the most likely figure from this list to be actualized in real life. Lastly, on the list here, we have Babu Frick. When you really think about it, it is completely egregious that we have not seen a Babu Frick minifigure at this point. For one, the character is among the most toyetic in Star Wars history and was almost certainly designed to be a cute little guy that sells toys. And for two, he has shown up in multiple projects at this point, in both the sequel trilogy Closer, The Rise of Skywalker, and again in the most recent season of The Mandalorian. Babu's antics immediately cemented him among fan-favorite funny guys, and the reappearance of the Anzellans in Mando Season 3 was widely enjoyed, most especially their interactions with Grogu. Give us the Babu Frick minifigure, you cowards. So these here are 15 characters that I would really love to see them make into minifigures, but who did I miss? I know there are scores of characters from across the many seasons of the Clone Wars, Rebels, Bad Batch, Resistance, and more that have yet to make it into minifigure form. Comment below and let me know which characters you would love to see made into minifigures, and I might shout you out in a future video where we point out more gaps in our Star Wars collections. Please like and subscribe below if you enjoy the content, guys. I would really appreciate it. I am posting twice a week right now, and then two shorts daily, so I hope to see you back on another video soon.